What about when you first built the team? What was the training? What, what was? Uh, Mr. Koch was, was the one who um, started the tech team. And um, so I'll let him chat about that. Well, um, we kind of just started with a wish and a dream that um, <laughs> that it would be successful. I, I had heard about, uh, there was this high school, I, I, I want to say in Tennessee, I, I forget where, but I, I contacted this uh, woman on Twitter who was doing it as part of her business class. She had a full curriculum and her students did it um, in conjunction with that and they had to do a whole portfolio of work and I said, well, we're at the middle school level, uh, do you have any advice for implementing this kind of thing? So I kind of took some of her cues and we designed some of it ourselves. And we said, all right, the first thing that we're gonna establish is we're gonna be software based and troubleshooting based. We're not gonna be anything to do with our hardware. So I'm never gonna have these students bash open an iPad and try to figure out what's wrong with it. Um, we took, initially we put flyers around and I took volunteers and it was a club. We had about 10 members and I kind of plucked them out of their peer groups. And um, students that I knew were good with technology, Xander was just one that was always uh, high on the list because he just is a natural with that stuff. So I kind of asked around and I found those students that um, were well adept at it. And you, you, you can kind of find those student leaders on your campus, the ones that are always like, I'll help you, Mr. K, with, the, with this cord or this, this app or things like that. So we formed a team and we established um, a website and I had them submit Tech Tuesday videos, except Alicia. <laughs> she did some. Um, <laughs> the, yeah. So generally, yeah, you did. So generally, the uh, when they weren't out helping teachers, we used this program called Setmore that uh, we gave the link out at the beginning or middle of the school year, and teachers could um, schedule them to come in their classrooms. They would come pick up a pass, a Genius Squad pass. They would go into their classroom, and uh, they would know what they were doing uh, before they got in there. Um, when they weren't doing that, they were uh, to be working on uh, technology help videos and they had a whole um, list of things they could pick from. So they could do like a tutorial, they could do a here's my 10 best apps of this year video. Um, I let them use whatever apps they wanted. There was a student that did not want to be on camera, so she used uh, I think Telegami or uh, one of those other apps. Um, iMovie we used a lot and we kind of just built this library of technology help videos when we weren't out in the field helping uh, teachers and students. And it's kind of just growing from there, and um, it's changed a little bit. Um, I, I'm glad that it is. Uh, there's more members now, and it's kind of graduated into and not so much a club. Period, mm -hmm. Which it gives us more time, but then there again, they don't always get utilized, mm -hmm. right? Which we need to work on this year, getting them out a little bit more. Um, I think that there are a lot of teachers who could use the help who don't take advantage of it you know um, because sometimes it's nice just to have an extra hand in the classroom when you have a technology well, heavy yeah. lesson or or it's your first time using it these guys we had um, chatted earlier talked about like bees like cross-pollinating these guys are visiting all these different teachers all day they've used this other app before they've used you know whatever whatever and they've seen it work they also have seen problems that teachers have faced and how the teacher fixed it. So if these guys are out and about in classrooms, it's it provides an extra layer of comfort for the teacher. And I mean, they have a lot of knowledge. I'm always shocked. I shouldn't be, but I'm always shocked at how much these guys know and can do and understand. And um, you know, we we underutilize them. So I'm really looking forward to next year. Um, coming up with a better plan of how to push them out into the classroom since we do have a full period. And it, it does build. I mean, like these guys were second year gene squad and now I look at like seventh graders moving up and how much they have and they, you know, they kind of have this mentor relationship um, and it's, it's neat. It's neat to see. Any other questions that you guys have? Um, I was going to ask you guys Find it. Bright pink blood. I know it's bright pink. Um, oh, okay. I knew. I, was, I knew there was a good one that I wanted you to address. Okay. So, in the classroom, um, you've seen things go wrong with iPads. You've seen teachers maybe not use, not um, have trouble managing the devices. Um, what if 
advice would you give teachers and staff members that are going to a one-to-one? -one? What advice would you give them on classroom management systems and ways to um, help help things go smoothly with iPads? Um, I feel like um, a lot of um, teachers, um, like I said before, like they are you know perturbed by technology. They're like, oh, I don't want to use it. I don't like it. I get mad when kids are on their iPads in my class or anything like that. And I feel like one thing that can really help people with that is, well, if they're on their iPads doing something that they shouldn't be doing on their iPads, well then, don't give them a reason to. Do be, If you're doing something on the iPads with them, then obviously they're doing that with you and they're not going to be doing anything else. So if you're constantly using and integrating that technology into your classrooms, then you're not really going to see that problem nearly as much as you would be before. So I just feel like a lot, if you can just integrate it into your classrooms more and just be constantly using it, then it'll just overall be better for everyone and you'll be more comfortable with it, you'll just use it more, you'll find better apps to do instead of being like, oh, well, there's five apps that I know how to do really well. We can study together, we can play a game together, we can do all this stuff, but if we're not doing any of that, then I guess we'll just you know, do a worksheet. But if you know more about technology as a teacher, then you think, oh, well, there's an app for everything, so, oh, well, we can do, we can use this app for studying, we can use this app for this activity, you know, I want to have my students do a project, so just everyone make an iMovie, you know, and, yeah, or, <laughs> or a keynote, um, and just being better with technology as a teacher can help your class be better with technology and better at using it. So it just makes the experience better for everyone. And don't rule out technology as like, oh, it's not working, do a worksheet. Kids will say, oh my gosh, Miss, Miss Jenkins, I hate iPads, can we do something on Word, can we do something on paper? They don't mean it, they actually want to work with the iPad. Um, kids, but like, that, that is true. I don't know if you guys have experienced that yet, but we have kids who will get frustrated and right. say they don't, the kids are saying they don't want right. to use it. And like, I know I've been there, I was like, oh, I wish we were back to paper and pencil, but really, I wish we were all technology because it's um, much easier. So like, even, so don't rule the technology as you're, if it's not working. And also, if if it is not working, always have a backup plan, but not busy work, like as a paper and pencil. Just have like, okay, so we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do a, um, Summer brain, I can't think of anything. We're gonna do a um, keynote. We're gonna do a keynote. <laughs> we're, gonna a keynote. we're gonna create a keynote, and oh, um, Miss Jenkins' keynote is not working. Okay, then if you have a backup of other apps, you can use Google Slides, you can use um, iMovie, you can yeah. use them. Um, so just don't rule out technology as you know it's not working. Create paper and pencil. I heard you guys talk about some of the apps that you like earlier that you that you use for studying or, or something like that. What what are some what are some big project ideas that you've done in the last three years at your middle school that use technology that you can remember? Obviously, you're going to say key. But, no, but 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 what's but but there might be something different, yeah. or there may be a content area that did more of it than another content area. What, what are your thoughts on those? Um, we did a project in seventh grade in ELA, and it was about consumerism. And we were making a video on how consumerism affects, you know, not just America, but the earth, mm -hmm. and America, and all the other countries. And we made an iMovie about that. And that was really interesting because I was with a group, and you know, there's like that one person in the group that does all the work. And Is that you? Yeah, that's me. That's you? <laughs> no, okay. I, did, I was in all the videos. I had a tree as my camera stand, and um, because um, all of my, the rest of my group was doing something else, they weren't doing anything, and I was like, and it was really an eye opener, and I have to say, in civics, in the class we did, we, we did a lot of, we actually, there was 10 students in that class who did digital IMPs, and everybody else did, um, everybody else did paper, pencil IMPs, and I was You guys know what that is? I, interactive notebooks. Oh, okay. But yeah. Um, so, 
I was the digital interactive notebook, and we used to do so many projects in that class with um, iMovie and Keynote and Google Slides, and um, it was just really like you know because we did we were we were the generation we were the gap that didn't have iPads in fifth grade or sixth grade or seven uh, we got ours first very first iPads in seventh grade, so in seventh grade we were all it was all iPad and we were new to it and um, being in Genius Squad really helped you know helped because we were all new and all the kids had questions. Um, so it was really cool to experience different apps and using projects in seventh grade. So, so is your whole school iPad? Um, yes. Yeah. Students, yeah. teachers have iPads. Uh, iPad. They do. Well, but they, they, they also have a laptop. They have a whole. Yeah, I tell. Yeah. And Xander, what about you? Um, I feel like they're. Um, there are a bunch of different tools. There's, like she said, there's iMovie, there's Keynote. Um, I know Mr. Koch had showcased he had students who's quite a bit garage band. There's just a bunch of different apps that you can do things in. And I feel like, you know, you can have your students do one specific thing, but I feel like, and I don't know, this would probably be different from teacher to teacher. Some teachers would think it's amazing, some don't like it but giving the students, you know, a choice to do something. Um, if, you know, you have a project on like a book that you're reading, like if you're reading a book, you could, you know, like Mr. Koch had um, said in his um, presentation, you could have them make a song in GarageBand, you could maybe have them make like a quiz on study set. Just giving students options can be a really cool thing to do. and. You know, sometimes you can be like, okay, well, you have these options, and if you want to do something that even I don't know about, you can on this different or weird app, and then you can get some really cool and creative stuff out of that. So I feel like just giving some students the choice from a couple of different um, things can be really effective um, whenever you're doing a project or anything. So like you that. like that idea of just having a lot of choices? Yeah. Is, it, is there one uh, particular class or teacher or project that stands out for you from middle school? Um, like she mentioned the one on uh, consumerism in seventh grade.